Hi, friends. Welcome back. This midweek edition of the Unvarnished Jesus on this Lent Wednesday is an opportunity for us to think about the trial of Jesus again, this time before Pilate. It's day number 29, and this is the fifth station of the cross. Now, before I read, I want to invite you again out on Wednesday night. We've been doing these Lent Wednesday services. They're about 35 minutes in length at 7 o'clock in person at First Christian Church in the sanctuary. This week, we will be talking about healing from our infirmities. We'd love to have you out. Now, let's get back to the unvarnished Jesus. This comes from the book of Luke, chapter 23, verses 13 through 25. And I want you to notice the contrast that is being given between two individuals. One is Jesus and the other is Barabbas. Verse 13, Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I've examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. With one voice, one voice, they cried out, away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Now for the third time, he spoke to them. Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. My insight into today's reading is simply this. The crowd is almost always wrong. You can keep that in mind. I think it will help you to sort through a complex world in which we live. The crowd is almost always wrong. In this trial of Jesus, this time before Pilate, there's a choice to be made between two individuals, Barabbas and Jesus. And Jesus is the individual that's innocent, while we read from the text, Barabbas is the one that should be punished. Pilate will leave it to the crowd, not a good choice on his part. He will leave it to the crowd to decide who should be released for freedom. Barabbas was a well-known insurrectionist. He was a Jewish insurgent who led an uprising against the Romans, and obviously, as the text told us, he committed murder. He longed for liberation from foreign occupation. But as Jesus stands next to Barabbas, the crowd wants Barabbas. Jesus will be eventually condemned as the terrorist, ironically enough. Now, the tragedy of the crowd is their mentality. The crowd is blind, misled, and easily manipulated. When Jesus calls us to the way of peace, the crowd takes a hard pass on that. They would rather have Barabbas as their national hero. Jesus becomes the scapegoat in this situation. All the hate and anger that the crowd has inside their heart toward the Romans and the type of life that they have been forced to live, all of that is placed on Jesus. And he is the one that is condemned to death. It doesn't make any sense. You see, the crowd is almost always wrong. 
The politics of Jesus are not practical enough for the crowd. They want to see action. They want to see violence. Hmm. Barabbas, Jesus. Who would you choose? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, forgive us for the times when we follow the crowd rather than the way of Christ. Amen. See you tomorrow.